Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Reed and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Volume 24 of My Hero Academia. If you want to see my other videos on My Hero Academia, then the link's at the top of the screen for that playlist. But, uh, spoilers for this one, up to and including Volume 24. If you want to buy Volume 24, please use the affiliate link in the description. It'll help me out a lot. So, getting started. Uh, this volume is called All It Takes Is One Bad Day, which references uh, Batman the Killing Joke, where the Joker, of course, tries to manipulate Commissioner Gordon by just giving him a terrible day. So we meet this reporter for the Liberation, whose name is Chaitose Kazuki. And whole quote is called Landmine, which allows her to turn whatever she touches into a tiny bomb. And, I mean, the bombs don't really do much, but a lot of them could make things explode. So, quantity over quality with her. Um, and we get backstories for a lot of the villains, which I like to see. I like to see backstories. And we got a lot of them this volume. Um, and I like when we get to see things from the villain's perspective. And that's pretty much what this volume is. It's from the villain's perspective. So we find out that Toga, um, the whole backstory is she left home after middle school graduation after she killed another student and sucked his blood because she has this fascination with blood, blood from a very young age. And now in the present day, Toga undergoes another awakening and she can now copy and use the quirk of the person she's impersonating with a quirk. So she could become, she could turn her body into this other person and actually use the quirk. And we see her doing this, she realizes this when she turns into Uraraka. But eventually, um, uh, Chaitose injures Toga enough to where her injuries catch up to her. So it kind of takes her out of the fight for this, the rest of this volume. But she doesn't pass out before she kills Chatozi Kazuki, who dies after her fight. Um, so Sigaraki, we get little like hints of his backstory throughout this volume until it's revealed at the end. And we find out that he has a sister, and her name is um, Hana. And it's revealed that Sigaraki knew his grandmother. He finds out that his grandmother was a pro hero in the past. Um, and Shigaraki unlocks a new application of his quirk, which causes the disintegration effect to spread beyond what he has touched. So it's more powerful than it is ever before. So meanwhile, Dobby is confronted by Gaten, who has this ice quirk, which could manipulate all the ice in the area. And his quirk is exceptionally powerful, since he didn't go to school when he was little and spent all his time as a child training his quirk. Um, which makes him much more powerful than Todoroki when it comes to his ice cloak. And as a result of Dobby's brother with Gaten, the League of Villains members are separated. Um, so they can't really find each other for a while, but eventually, Twice locates an unconscious Toga. Like, Toga's unconscious because of the full battle. Um, and we find out about Chika Zoku's <laughs> That's a hard name to say. So his quirk is revealed, and he could turn a human-sized object, take a human-sized object and turn it into a look-alike of any given person he encounters. Um, so it's just a common theme, I realized, throughout this volume, of like things turning into something else. All things looking like other things, because you have Toga taking the quirks of the people she sucked blood from, but we also have twice making duplicates of himself, and then we have Chikazoku, this thing. So anyway, it's revealed that the Metal Liberation Army, they went to recruit twice because of his quirk, and they went because of his quirk double, and they went to use it to keep the Supreme Commando in action if something happens to him. They could just make another Supreme Commando, that's what they want twice for. And we get another backstory of for now this one's for twice kind of like toga and he was a lonely kid and he began to clone himself 
to try to combat that loneliness, but he created too many clones and it kind of drove him insane because he was like, am I the clone? He doesn't know if he's the clone or not. He, he kind of had an identity crisis still. But he was recruited into the League of Villains because he wanted friends and he wanted to belong somewhere. Um, kind of like a lot of people who join Inner City Gangs, I guess. Um, but now in the present day, when he's capsuled, he begins moving past the psychological trauma after realizing that he is the original because he's injured. And when his copies are injured even slightly, they disintegrate. But he realizes that he's the original now. So he gets his confidence back and everything's good. And he creates several clones of himself with this cork for the first time since his identity crisis when his clones slaughtered all of themselves at the same time. It's been a long time since that happened, but he's back and he creates a lot of himself. It's, it's kind of funny because he's a funny character. And now tries rescues Toga and has his clones aid his friends. So he creates clones of his other friends too, but they're not as powerful because he needs to know a lot about them and he knows himself the best. So his clones are the best. Um, so Skeptic is preparing to go after Twice. And Getin mentions that Dobby can't handle the heat of his cloak. So that explains why Dobby has bones on his body. And I'm also guessing that's why Sugawaki has the same thing. And that's why Sugawaki, his face is like decayed and stuff. So anyway, um, Gaganta Tomichia, <laughs> I hate these names. He awoke and he's heading towards the League of Villains location. So we see Best the Genist again for the first time since that big and evil fight. And it's revealed that Best Genus he doesn't have a lung. He he only has one lung now because he lost the other one during the Camino incident. So Hawks meets with Best Genist. And of course we know that Hawks is actually working for the League of Villains, but Hawks abducts the Best Genist. So nobody knows where he is now in the public. And he contacts uh, Dobby for a meeting. So they're probably going to meet in the next volume. Uh, meanwhile, back at the um, fight with the villains in the Liberation Army, Twice re reaches the inside of the tower where he confronts Reed Estro. And Reed Estro appears to have a muscle amplification quirk. When they first fight, he realizes that. Um, and we also get Destro's past. And his dad is revealed to have been rejected by society for his cork. And he started his movement after the murder of his mother. So it kind of made him go evil. Um, so Shigaraki destroys the tower that they're in. And he finally comes face to face with Redestro. So we get this big fight the volume's been leading to between Redestro and Shigaraki. Two villains facing off. And we find out that Redestro turns his stress into power. That's what his cork means. So, whenever he gets really stressed out, he becomes more powerful. Um, but, you know, that doesn't really make much sense to me. Because if you know that when you get stressed out, you become more powerful, wouldn't that not make you stress out? Like, wouldn't it make you less anxious to know that everything's going to be fine once you stress out? It's like a, it's like a paradox, you know? I don't, I don't know. I need some answers on that one. But anyway, uh, Twice is preparing to do a blood transfusion on Toga, but Skeptic interrupts him and he takes Twice. So n more memories of Sugawaka's family appear in these flashbacks now, because he kind of gets hints in little pieces. And it's now revealed that his grandparents were also killed when his cork, when he realized what his cork was. Now, Gigantichomitia finally reaches the city, and the Metal Liberation Army believes that the League of Villains were hiding him from notice to try to use him later when they needed, when they needed the big guns. So Sugawaki, meanwhile, he has just awakened this quirk, and it allowed him to disintegrate people without all of his five fingers touching the target. 
before he had to touch them with five fingers, but now he just needs one. So that helps him with his power now. And we get more flashbacks on Sugawaki's childhood. And we find out that his hair was originally black. And it's revealed that his dad hated heroes because of because his father's mother abandoned him to become a hero and died. And he would punish his son when he showed interest in anything hero related. So he was pretty abusive. And um, Shigaraki's quirk was delayed in forming and it awakened and its awakening caused his body st like pain like I said earlier his like eyes started decaying but he thought it was a rash um, so the abuse the like the verbal and physical abuse Shigaraki suffered when he was little it triggered his hatred of everybody when pretty much everybody who doesn't help him or doesn't like him so yeah, pretty, pretty crazy dude. Um, but back in the present, Redestro is unable to heal his subordinates, warning him of Gargantia Tomitia. But he's able to release his stress, building up all this time into an attack, and he attacks um, Shigaraki, and that's the end of the volume. So yeah, that's basically volume 24. I really like this volume a lot. I liked it a lot, um, much more than these past two volumes. This, I, mean, I don't know, probably since the um, Endeavor fight, this is probably the best volume since then. This, I love seeing the backstories of all the different villains, and it makes them more relatable and human. I, I really love when anime and pretty much literature in general does this. It does a really good job with Game of Thrones, or Song of Ice and Fire, I mean. It does a really good job like that in Breaking Bad. So I'm glad that my hero Gademia has done this too. Um, I'm gonna give this volume an A minus. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this volume, and what you think's gonna happen. Uh, I post videos every Sundays and Tuesdays, so make sure you subscribe and look out for those. I'm gonna review volume 25 pretty soon. Um, probably in a couple weeks. So I hope everybody out there has a nice day and stay safe and peace.